well guys welcome back to another video you were probably expecting uh, me to be at big haze today i was too to be honest i don't know how this has come about but basically there's been so many of you guys that have been saying keep the constant uploads keep bringing videos out every sunday and at the time of recording this or fishing here um i've not actually been well by the time you're watching this in fact i've not actually been to big haze yet so to keep up with the content keep videos come in for you every Sunday Jordan and I have decided to take a trip I can't believe I'm saying this we're at Linear Fisheries and we're fishing Bray's Nose 1 now at the start of the year when I took up carp fishing I never expected but by the end of summer I would be on a, on a venue like this it's just absolutely unbelievable it's quite busy there's a few swims dotted about empty ones but it's just a huge lake. I think it's like 33 wraps from, from where I'm fishing to the middle, that's just to the middle of the lake. And it's quite deep. I don't know exactly how deep it goes, but it's pretty deep. <laughs> anyway, still, I wasn't sure whether I'd be comfortable fishing at that range. I wanted to make sure that I was more accurate than try and just hoon it out into the middle of the lake. Um, so what I've been doing is um, I've actually been bringing it back. I found when I was, when I was marker leading out this morning, um, I actually found a gravel bar, which I was very surprised about. It was only 11 and a half wraps out, 11 and a half, 11 three quarters wraps out, um, which I was super, super happy about because that meant that I could now comfortably fish at 11 and a half wraps, which is what I've done. And that bar ran from one spot to another, basically. It runs quite long. Um, so because of that, I'm able to put both rods on on the bar they're on different spots but they're both on this gravel bar because this bar's quite long i'm going to try different things but at the moment the rods are out i'm going to leave them out we've got potential here to catch an absolute lump i'm super super excited i'm still on the hunt for my 20. what a brilliant opportunity i've got right here to do this we're doing uh we're, we're staying overnight hence why the bivvy's up we're staying overnight oh come on well, that is now both rods out. <laughs> We're looking good. We've got one in line with that tree there. And we've got one in line with that tree there. So basically this is my spot. But I haven't baited. A oh my God, I'm so sorry about that. <laughs> a wasp just landed on my hand that I'm filming my with my phone landed i saw it i was watching it out the corner of my eye i, I didn't think nothing of it and i felt it land on my hand it's because my hands stink of all the gluggy stuff all the um oh i'm like paranoid about it now thinking there's something there when there's not yeah my hands stink i need to wash them off but that's probably why the wasp landed on my hand anyway let's get back to it so there's this gravel bar and it runs from around this well around where the trees are across to where those trees are and it's only 13 and a half wraps it, it comes back as well it it's about, it's about 14 wraps to, the gravel bar is about 14 wraps to about 12 wraps. So I'm fishing at 13 and a half. Um, as I said, I've got one on that left-hand spot, one on that right-hand spot. I haven't baited up the whole area. I've just baited up that left-hand spot and baited up that right-hand spot. So hopefully they'll move into the, gravel, into the gravel bar and just pick off the bits of food and then pick up one of my traps. Oh my God, I'm so excited. Come on, B1, do me a fish. It's meant to be super windy here for the next couple of days, so, you know, we have picked two swims where the wind is, I mean, it could be changing, you know, I think it's quite choppy, it's sort of going all over the show. But we're in this little corner, Jordan's got the corner peg, and I think he's got a rod out all the way down there. Now, for those of you who are familiar with Bray's Nose 1, I'm going to tell you where I'm fishing, but I don't think, I don't think the pegs or, or the swims are numbered. So it's hard to say, but as I say, if any of you are familiar, we are on the same side as the disabled swims, but we are right down the other end um, in the corner. So let me quickly turn the camera around and I'll show you. So the disabled swims are right down the other end on this side, and we are obviously on the same side, right down uh, in this bottom corner. So yeah, I'm just keeping my eye on the water. Basically, I've seen a fish jump. Actually, as soon as we arrived, it jumped up in Jordan's swim down in that down in that sort of bay area down there. I'm gonna go over there in a minute and just speak to Jordan, see where he's put his rods, see if he's happy with them. But it's about 10 o'clock now. We're both sorted, we're both out, we're both fishing. Everything is ready, the traps are set. It's just a matter of waiting now. So we're in Jordan's swim. All right, Jordan, 
Yeah, are you? Yeah. Are you happy with uh, with your setup? Yeah. And where you're fishing? Confident? Yeah, I've lost two spawns, but you know. You lost two spawns, well, it happens, doesn't it? Show us where you're fishing, mate. So, my left rod. You might have to talk up a bit because it's quite windy. So, my left rod. <laughs> um, just over there, 14 and a half wraps out. Keep your finger there so we can get a good sort of gauge of where you're fishing. Just around there, type of thing. So in between the two trees. In between the two trees, yeah. 15 and a half wraps out. Yeah, and I just said I saw a fish jump there when we arrived, so I'm hoping he gets his head down. And one, good mate. Mid crisps. And you're right, Rob. Then back four trees, the middle tree, 15 and a quarter wraps out. 15 and a quarter wraps. So the back four trees, or five trees, and the middle tree. And how did you find um, casting? Like, obviously, the thing is with me is I, I just felt like maybe, because I'm fishing at 11 and a half wraps, I didn't know if that was far enough. I thought maybe I want to try and get it out in the middle a bit more, but of course I was struggling with the accuracy, wasn't I? Mm. How'd you find it? Um, it was all right. A couple wayward, a bit right. Yeah. A bit short, but it sounds it's our first big water, isn't it? Really? It is our first big water. And I just want to reiterate that as well. You know, I do see a lot of videos where people go, oh, I'm only fishing at 20 wraps. Only 20 wraps is still... For, for, for a uh, beginner carp fisherman, 20 wraps is still a chuck. Um, but I guess, obviously, the more big waters you fish, the more you get used to it. Uh, you know, and it's all in a technique and, and, and things like that. And having confidence as well, because every time I chuck my spawn out, um, basically, I, I can chuck a lead a lot more comfort confidently than I can chuck my spawn. Because every time I think I'm going to get a crack off or something like that. Frankly, I didn't. Um, but yeah, as I say, I'm very comfortable I'm fishing over a hard patch. I'm very comfortable at 11 and a half wraps, so I'm going to keep it. Keep it with that. Well, isn't it nice when you finally got settled, you've got everything set up and you can just kick back and relax. And to help me do that, I've got a pack of Snacker Jacks. Now, as I say, we are staying here overnight. I have got the... Uh, the frying pan with me so i am going to do a little bit of cooking but i'm trying to be a bit more healthy aren't i so i've not bought anything too extravagant to eat i got my snacker jacks i've got spaghetti and sausages you gotta love that you really have got to love that i got some tins of beans um i got oh in fact i have got one thing that's a little bit naughty um, I'm going to have it for breakfast tomorrow. It's the Rustler's uh, little breakfast muffins that they do. They're only a pound. Tesco's club card. If you don't know about them, get on them. Oh, I've only gone and got a couple of swans down by the, my rods there, look. Fancy that. What could they be eating down there, George? Oh, I don't know. Uh, well, basically, what happened was... What happened was... <laughs> I put a spawn... I did it on purpose, all right? I definitely did do it on purpose. Oh, look, there's another one. There's three of them down there. Oh, as long as I don't eat bumper rods. 6 p.m. the gate shut. Oh, there's another one. There's four of them. Good luck, bud. Look. <laughs> oh, mate, there's five. The thing is, I don't even want to scare them because they're just going to make a mess of my rods. I'll slowly walk over to them. Look, you live and you learn, okay? They're eating. What I did, they're going to start hissing at me now. Oh, this, they're going to be here for the whole time I'm here now, aren't they? Thinking I'm feeding them. So what I did was I wanted to see... Oh, my God, you're going to headbutt the bloody rods. I wanted to see how much um, one spawn of bait looks in the water. <laughs> so I dropped a spawn on, on purpose um, down there to see how much, how it looked. And obviously, these guys have come in and... I don't know how they found it, but they have. And they're picking it all up and eating it. Oh, lads, come on. Look, you're going to go straight over my line. Don't hiss at me. You're the ones that have come over to me. I should be hissing at you, if anything. I mean, it is your home. I can't do nothing. Like, I ain't going to... There's five of them, mate. Like, come on. I ain't going to take these on. All right, lads, come on. You've had your fun. Bore off. Buffet's over. Go on. Yeah, look, you're going to... Oh, my God. 
All right, lads. All right. Cheers. He's going to go straight through my line. Look. Oh, my gosh. Oh, he's going under it. Oh, okay. Oh. What about what this one? What's he going to do? Oh, straight over it. Oh, straight over it again. Oh, oh, straight through it. He's, oh my bloody God. Cheers, buds. He's got his, he's wrapped around his foot. Gonna have to redo my rod now. It's wrapped around his foot. Well, all jokes aside, that is a lesson learned. As funny as that might be, it's actually quite annoying because I've had to reset that rod now. Although I'm very happy with it. Um... I didn't go out first time. I didn't hit the clip. Second time went out lovely. Was very happy with it. Yeah. If you want to test anything in the water, do it at home, or do it on a lake where you're not bothered about it, because <laughs> you don't want to be making mistakes like that on a venue like this. Lesson learned. I told you I was cutting down, and I told you I had spaghetti and sausages. And uh, yeah, it's just come up to 1 p.m. now, so. Um, no bites to report as of yet, but I thought I'd get some lunch on the go, so I'm gonna have spaghetti and sausages, happy days, with, let me show you what I'm gonna have it with. I'm gonna dip some of these white pitters in there. I reckon that'd be quite nice. I'm not gonna have all of them, Christ. I reckon that'd be quite nice. Spaghetti and sausages, bit of pit of bread in there. Soak up some of that tomato juice. <sighs> Lovely. Mmm. That keeps you warm in the winter. Ooh. Now, what I like to do before I send out my bait on my rig is get a little mesh PVA bag, and that's just got a few pellets, boilies, bit of corn in there, and I'm going to hook that onto my hook. And then what else? What the what else I do? is I get this flat spot by Parker Bates and it's basically hemp oil on steroids. And I will get my syringe and I will basically fill the syringe up and then just shoot it inside that PVA bag. So that, that PVA bag is now super smelly and oily with the pellets, the boilies and the sweet corn in landing right on top of my rig with my bait, which is sort of like a snowman. That top is quite a big, they're like quite big thick toppers. But um, yeah, hopefully we'll send that out and that'll do something. Right, so let me get this camera set up here so you can see what I'm doing. So I've got my D-Rig. All I'm gonna do is hook on my mesh bag, twist it round, hook it in again. And before I send that out, make sure that's properly on the hook because you don't want that coming off whilst you're casting. And then before I send that out, I get my flat spot from the Parker Bates, put it, put my syringe inside it, pull this up without dropping it, which I've done before, trust me, it's not good. And now that syringe is full of that, uh, the hemp oil, basically, the flat spot. I'm going to then put it inside the PVA bag, I'm going to shoot it, try not to spill as much as possible, but it's quite hard because it sort of goes everywhere but I just want to cover it basically. There we go. Now that is awesome and it's ready to go out on the money. And there we have it. Let me quickly hold it up for you. Oh my God, my line's so see-through, I can't even see it. There's the lead. There we go. <laughs> Look at that. Let's get that out. Now look at this. This flat spot is incredible because look where I've cast. That is absolutely insane. Just that small little syringe produces that flat spot on the lake. Although that's, that cast was slightly to the right of my spot, I'm not too bothered. It wasn't too far away for me to be that bothered about it. I know the importance of making sure you're accurate and stuff like that, but trust me, that's on the edge of that spot with that little mesh bag as well. That little mesh bag is just one suck for the fish. Hopefully it takes up my hook bait as well. And the reason why the flat spot, it looked like it was well off my spot, like way too far to the right, is because obviously as it hits the water, um, the wind is carrying, is pushing the water from left to right. So that's why 
as obviously the flat spots in the water, it's the wind's blowing it, so it looks like it's it's going that way. But you know, it's in the vicinity. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. Well, the evening is slowly drawing in. Weather's actually really good. The sun's come out. Just as it's gonna start to get down. And it's looking bloody lovely out there. A little bit windy, a little bit on the cooler side. But you've got to expect that this time of year, back end of summer. <laughs> this makes me laugh, this guy opposite me. Every time he spawns out, he gets attacked by about 15 seagulls. <laughs> so I'm getting the swans, he's getting the seagulls. I get a lot of coots diving down, they're all out there, look. They keep diving down on my spot, but I don't think they're picking anything up, it's quite deep. But um, we've seen one fish caught, this gent over here in this corner. I don't know if you can see him over there. There he is over there. He had one out, couldn't see how big it was. But yeah, no real, no real signs. And I say, still I've only seen, well, I haven't seen any sign of fish apart from that one at the start. Here yeah, look at this. Going right over our heads. How the hell do those things stay in the air? Unbelievable. It's probably doing four or five hundred mile per hour. Don't look it, does it? But it is. Crazy. It is now half past six and literally nothing to talk about. It's been a bit of a dead day, to be honest. But I'm hoping that we're building our swim slowly but surely and then maybe during the night it might turn on. As I said, it's half six now, it's within the next hour, it's gonna be very dark. So I decided to do my rods now, get them out nice and early. <laughs> I, I'm laughing because I was gonna tell you what I had for dinner. Now, I told you at the start of the video that I was trying to be good, trying to cut down, but I didn't bring much food with me and that was the problem. We might have got a delivery. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that we did, I'm just saying it, we might have. Um, we might have ordered a kebab. We might have had cheesy chips and mozzarella dip. We might have, okay? It, it, there's no proof, there's no evidence. I didn't put it in the video. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we're all, dinner's sorted. Don't worry about that, dinner's been sorted. But yeah, I've, I've basically I've spawned out about six or seven spawns on each spot. All gone out a lot better than they did this morning. So I'm very happy with that. I did try a pineapple pop-up on a stiff hinge. I tried that for probably about three hours. I mean, I, it's not, I didn't really give it a fair crack of the whip, but I don't know, I didn't have much confidence in it. So anyway, changed it, sorted that out. So that's it for the night now. They're staying out, they're not getting touched. And then hopefully we get woken up during the night. If we don't, then at least we get a good sleep. That's the plan. Um, don't know how cold it's gonna be, but um, I'm gonna have to get used to it if you guys want more videos every Sunday. So there it is. Both rods out, happy with them both. Spawn, plenty of bait out there. There's not a lot more we can do. Well, what a beautiful morning. Look at that. Sun just coming up over the far side of the lake. And it's absolutely stunning. But unfortunately, absolutely nothing to report. <laughs> Again, it's being very difficult here um for, like i said it's the first time that we fished a big water like this sun's right in my eyes there um <clears throat> so you know maybe if ever we come back which i'm sure we will we'll approach it slightly different i think that the fish are more like you know i'm fishing 11 and a half wraps i just don't think it's far enough i think the fish are a bit further out into the middle um but i know for a fact i, I can't at the moment where i'm at i can't be sending bait out there all the time comfortably landed in the same spot i just couldn't do it so yeah that's something i've got to learn and maybe brush up on um a bit of casting and that but i just think like i mean it was so cold last night there was i came out of the bivy and looked up and there was not a cloud in the sky and there was just it was just lit up with stars and you know you know <clears throat> at night time <clears throat> when there's no star when there's no clouds it's just so cold um and you know even though it's still the back end of summer 
lakes cool down a lot quicker than they than they warm up so if the water's cold i don't know if the fish are going to be moving as much you know in the summer the fish will swim around and they'll find your bait i just think here in in these conditions in this situation you need to find the fish um and obviously where i'm fishing <laughs> there must be no fish i think i'm going to leave both rods on the same spot if the fish do come across that spot hopefully they go if not We'll have to go back to the drawing board and come back with a bit more knowledge about the lake and um, a little bit more knowledge about how to approach Braze Nose One. Right, I've decided to keep the rods on the spots because I know there's bait out there. I've spawned out a little bit more bait. I'm not going to touch it anymore for the, for the day. That's it. Time for me to get a bit of food on the go. And this is exactly what I was talking about. The sausage muffins from Rustlers. Oh my God, they're a pound with a Tesco's club card. Bit of cheese, bit of ketchup, they go down a treat. Look at that little naughty breakfast muffin. Mmm, <laughs> that definitely warms up the cockles in the morning. This is getting a bit frustrating now. This, oh, every time you think you see a, a fish moving over your spot, all of a sudden a bird pops up. I think it's the coots just diving down on the bait. It's so it's so frustrating because if you're not watching them and you look back and you see a big swirl out there, you think, oh, there's fish moving on my bait. And then all of a sudden, five seconds later, coot just pops up. Ah. Well, we've got about three or four more hours left. I think we're going to come off about one or two o'clock. Um, yeah, I don't know, man. It's just very much like... I think if we ever came back here, like I just said, I think we'd prepare better we do a bit more research um we obviously got to improve our casting um but then who's to say that all the fish are in the middle of the lake i'm only assuming they're there because nobody's catching so i don't know i really don't know like i say that guy down there's casting a lot further to the middle of the lake than we are and he's had nothing so maybe it's just one of those days where or one of those sessions where the weather fish aren't feeding but um I like to, even if I have sessions where I blank, I always like to try and take something out of it. So, for example, even though I can't cast as far as, as maybe 20 wraps or so, I'm so much more comfortable now fishing at 11 and a half wraps or 11 and three quarter wraps. I think the left one's 11 and a half, the right one's 11 and three quarters. But um, even still, this session has made me a lot more comfortable casting at that range. So when I start to get my technique right, when I start to do it more and, and obviously get better feel for everything that I'm using and, and making sure I get things right, I know that comfortably now I'll be able to fish at up to 12 wraps. So that's good. Um, but it's all a learning curve, isn't it? Like I say, I, I'm new to this carp angling scene. I only started this year. Um, and I'm still chasing that 20, <laughs> which is crazy because I've come to B1. But if they're not feeding, they're not feeding. So it just goes to show how good these anglers are that go and pull out these 30 40 pound fish in these lakes it's actually it's absolutely incredible um but like i say the next video definitely will be this time it definitely will be big haze and uh, i've got a really good feeling about big haze so hopefully my first 20 does come from big haze although saying that we've got two or three hours uh three or four hours left on here so there's still a chance we're all packed away now i've just got my two rods out Bivy's gone, bed chair's gone. Didn't done my little bits and bobs, but I just, you know, I don't know. It's. I'm sorry this was a bit of a boring video, not much to show, but this is the thing, right? It's, it's fishing you don't catch all the time. And, you know, I've had conversations with people before where I've been fishing, I've recorded videos and I've gone, do you know what? I'm not gonna put that on my YouTube channel because it's a boring video, nobody wants to watch it. But the thing is, it's part of a journey, isn't it? You know, like I said, I'm, I'm new to this. Um, there's going to be times, and even people that are, are experts at fishing will blank sometimes because you can be the best fisherman in the world. You could be somebody that's only just started. It doesn't mean that you're not going to blank some days because some days you will, just the way it works. You know, it could have been a different story. I could have caught a 30 pound. I could have caught my first 20. I could have caught any fish. I could have caught a roach or a tench. Apparently there's three pound roach in it, which to be fair is a big bloody roach, but it hasn't happened for whatever reason today. Um, 
but yeah like i say the next one will be big haze so as always thank you for watching and finally the long awaited trip to big haze will be out next sunday live at five so thanks for watching this one and i'll see you next week for big haze